It has independent living, assisted living. In our case, particularly about Berkeley Square today, we have independent living, assisted living, skilled, and memory care. So your apartment life and homes, Berkeley Square in particular in Butler County has one of the largest independent living choices to have. So that's an exciting thing and a lot of you heard us talking about our newest project, Harmony Drive. So uh, the campus in general, uh, I will share if you're new to us and new to me, uh, the, the little commercial about Berkeley is I call it kind of our country mouse it, with the green grass, but it has 80 acres. It has a feel that is unlike any other neighborhood. It is not feeling like you drive through and, and feel like you are really at uh, someplace commercial. You truly feel, and, and I think Pat and a few others could share, it's home, it's home. Uh, services and amenities, what you can expect in a life plan community is different at all of ours, but I'll, I'll highlight a few if this is your first visit with us. Maintenance free living, it's one of the reasons my own mom was looking. I share that story a lot. Um, that means you don't have to worry about your hot water heaters, your furnace, the gutters. Maintenance-free living means you sit and watch them put your mulch down. It's exciting. Other uh, amenities, we are a walking community and John's gonna talk about this later, but what does that mean? There's walking paths, miles of walking paths throughout the community. We have dining options and again, uh, dining options here, and remember, we're also going to talk about COVID a little bit, but in, a, in our normal world, uh, the coach house and our casual dining rooms, our pop-up food truck nights, dining options are exciting, and the coach house in particular, I know, is just a, a big favorite among the lifestyle of Berkeley Square. We have elements, and John, too, will speak about elements and amenity of that is uh, it's how you stay strong. It's how you plug in, whether that's yoga, whether that's line dancing, elements in the pool. I know I have a lot of pool fans. The pool is great for your joints. Uh, those are services and amenities. I, I would be remiss without talking about a sidebar amenity. If you're new to us, Trips and Travel, we are the only life plan community that has a formal official Trips and Travel club it is open to butler county for people that are not here in a normal normal situation today we are just getting our buses going so there will be limits trips and travel means when we strategically sat down and said when you retire what do you want well what do i want I, what do I want? I want what you want i want to travel the world i want to see greece i want to see it all and so uh nancy betters is on this call and i am so honored and proud to talk about her because you feel like you're traveling with a friend. Nancy has been a longtime employee that plans these, just when I think one year's over, nothing else could come. She plans amazing things for you. That trips and travel has become uh, such a heartbeat for all of us. She went to Hawaii a few years ago and took 50 people with her. She went to New York. She does day trips. She does happy hour on the road. I can't share enough about that unique opportunity at our life plan community. So I think I've hit it all. I mean, from elements to dining to maintenance free living, those are most of the amenities you can enjoy at a, oh, life care. And, and this could be something all of you are hearing for the first time new to us. A life plan community, a nonprofit offers life care. And what does that mean? It really truly means that if, um, you were to run out of money, you never have to move out. We have you, we have, as a company, we commit to every approved applicant. We will take help take care of you the rest of your life. And I meet a lot of couples that maybe don't have kids or really don't wanna bother their, they want their own plan in life. And so there's a, a security to me when I share with families about life care that is so reassuring, and I don't, I don't know, uh, you know, if any of the residents would ever comment on that, you know, down the road. But life care is a very, very big part of nonprofits. Perfect. Good. Ready. Next slide. Here we go.
we are. Um, I know this is so fun. I haven't had lipstick on in 12 months with hiding these masks, so I couldn't be more excited, you, my new friends, on the Zoom call. Uh, Pat and I, this past week, I actually have a model that is open by appointment for all of you to visit with us. She joined me in the model for, and we recorded, and we're not like movie stars, let me tell you, but we were, we recorded a, a really sweet um, talk with her. Pat Johnson, what you're going to see, and it's, I want to frame this up for her because she and I talked after COVID, like the rest of the world, we've had to adapt. And are our spirits still strong? The spirit of Berkeley, yes. Are her neighbors still have a crush on her? Yes. But like everyone, uh, we've all had to adapt to life with COVID. So she is going to talk about, as a 10-year resident, you're going to see her talk about her experience. I helped her move in. I helped her uh, really and start enjoying life. And she couldn't be, I, I kid that she's our resident photographer because we all get so much joy out of Pat's pictures. So. Without further ado, I think we should play the video of Mrs. Pat Johnson. Hello, I am Shelly Henderson with Pat uh, Miller and I'm going to go one second. Back. I just know that I exercise, I miss that, 
although during COVID, I've been pleased that they have these exercise classes on our in-house TV. So right. we can do those like we were in class. I mean, just right in the chair. Yes, a little bit. Does it feel better? You got it? I mean, I like it better when we get to be back with people because that's the whole thing you get to be it is. I'm not one that just want to exercise. I'm not myself. a self motivator either, so that yeah. would be hard. I know, and having people there and you be go, they say, well, hard, so where were you? <laughs> where were you? <laughs> uh, but no, uh, they're just the different uh, games that they play, different things go on. There's just always something. Book club, which I was involved in that for a while, not during this period, but there is anything you want to do is uh, there was a golf uh, there might be more golf uh alleys now because we have a lot of younger people where we could all be outside and see our friends on uh, different food trucks um and coming in like a we could pick out like a, oh, i forgot to mine out tonight yeah i forgot to put mine out for a boy uh, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah. this right but they bring part the food to you you yeah. serve up you want it if you want it Later in your door, and there's just been so many things. Uh, yeah, and the, the uh, parades they've had, and the car parades around came from the churches around our. It's just I don't know. It just it was good because we need that little perk, you know. Right. It's the little things, and we learned during COVID it's all about it. It's all about the little things. It's all so Berkeley's known for events, whether it's a monthly happy hour, monthly buffet. Resident appreciation. I'm gonna quiz you. In your ten years, what events really stand out to you or meant a lot to you to go to at Berkeley? <sighs> Let me think. I did. I did enjoy uh, anything that was in the football room, whether it be a Mardi Gras, uh -huh. where we were all more. You see more of the residents together uh -huh. that way. And I'm a circulator. I like to go around and see everybody. Uh, the residents appreciation both uh, even at the fourth of July and you had that and our residents were invited outside and brought food. Um, I think the things I liked the most were anything that brought a bigger group of us together so I could see everybody because this is like a pretty big place and not everybody gets out to do things. Uh, not capable maybe or not interested, which is fine if everybody moves here for their own reasons. But those things I enjoyed because it was just like seeing my friends and, you know, catching up with them. And I just, I love it. Yeah. And then the coach house is another thing too. That's a real plus because people meet there sometimes different groups for cocktail hour or just for dinner and the entertainment and the meals they have with wine and, you know, all that. Uh, I forgot what you call that. You, uh, you know, you pay for it as a one time, one price. Uh, but no, I mean, honestly, other than that, I just like everything, but that would probably rank highest for me. I said to uh, one of the residents that lived here, you know, what I learned, one of my biggest lessons in COVID is that life really is meant to be lived together. And these activities we, we took for granted so yes. many times, um, life is meant to be lived together. Yeah. What were you surprised about after moving in? Was there anything that you were like, oh, I really love this? I didn't expect this. You know, I've been thinking you said that, and I wish I could right, come to mind quickly, but I can't. But I was thinking about things I was doing for myself, even like uh, pulling weeds, for instance. And I hate to do it, and I thought I don't want to do that anymore. And I found out, oh, I can just win a work order, yeah. and they won't come do it. Yeah, or great. anything that's, I like, I've always been active, but later years I've fallen. But things I might have in my garage, uh, a high up box, I have Christmas decoration boxes in my garage on shelves and they said don't uh, try to do that yourself you know I'm going elderly I don't like that but you know and I was a person one time a box kind of it didn't hurt me I thought this is stupid so I just put in a work order and sure enough one of the maintenance guys came didn't take long but I thought this is crazy this is why I'm living here that's why I'm getting all these helps I don't have a man anymore so that was that wouldn't say it's is a surprise and it's also a pleasant surprise yeah. because just to know that I'm, I'm here and I know things that happen with my Jimmy, like Rika, she's everybody, you, I mean, there's somebody here to help you, and that's what I like, especially living alone as a widow. It's great to know that I'm not alone. If I really, I just have to ask sometimes, you know, they don't know physically I look okay, but that's, that's the best thing.
Describe your life at Berkeley Square in one word. I said, it's my life. My life. life. <laughs> my life. Everything here is my life. And in fact, I have friends outside, of course, but the majority of my life before COVID was involved with things at Berkeley, whether it be exercise, uh, just anything I did was at Berkeley. Anything I wanted to do, things I wanted to do, and I just was too tired because I did too much. That changed. You didn't even know you wanted to do yeah, it. Right. Sure. Yeah, but that really... Berkeley is my life now. You touched on trips and travel, which is exclusive to Berkeley Square within 100 miles. No one has that if they're watching. Oh. Nancy Fetters leads that, and it's been such a oh. blessing. For I hear more about that. In fact, that's open to the community. You don't have to be a resident. Right. We do allow people to come with us to taste the life. What trip has been really, really fun uh, for you? Uh, well, the ones that I've gone a lot, but the one that really the most fun I had is when we went to New York City uh, for five days. I mean, it was just, I think even Nancy better said this, so it was with Nancy and a group, one of us, and it was, it was fantastic because uh, we got to see Broadway shows, uh, what is it, Miss Adali? Hello, darling. That's We're that Midler and I get another one, but uh, I, I see Broadway shows here in Cincinnati. But and being with the group, it was just everything's organized. Nancy Fetters is the best. I mean, no matter what we do, we love having Nancy because she makes things fun all the time. She really she makes, best fun. She makes things fun, and I don't know what to do without her. One thing I wish everyone knew about Berkeley Square is. Not just old people, might be older people, but young at heart. <gasps> oh, I mean, because so they are, I mean, uh, that's why I'm sorry my husband felt that way. It was just a perception that a lot of people, I'm sorry to say, have. I don't know there, it's old people. Well, yeah, it's not to come in. People to now. get old, but there are young people come in. I mean, now I'm thinking, I'm one of those old people, they're right, that you know, you know. Uh, yeah, no, it's uh, people need to experience something where they can see just how everything's can how the the residents are treated how we're taken care of and you don't have to worry about anything just be yourself have fun and there's just no worry about it okay give me just a second thank you pat that video made me cry yesterday <laughs> um it's been a long time um the we've been moving through this pandemic so let me get my screen back up here can everyone see me now i can see you okay so you ready to get back to it i'm ready okay all yours can you hear me yeah i love your video pat and we're not we're not professionals my family my new friends on the zoom but i i can't tell you how sweet her story is and I know she's going to stay on the call if you have questions for her especially you guys just coming in thinking about coming in I know when I hear her talk about uh, her her friendships here the staff and the neighbors it just melts my heart so our next phase and I promise it won't be super long staying connected through COVID reconnecting and reopening plans I do want to introduce John Frost to talk a little bit about this. Uh, go to the next slide. Are you on unmute, John? I am. I want to introduce you to my new Zoom friend. You want to say hello? Hello, everyone. Um, there are some faces on here that I definitely know, like Kim. Um, you were talking about missing the exercise classes. Kim, I miss seeing you in our exercise classes so much. Um, and there are some people in there that I know that they don't know I know. Uh, Jennifer, uh, my wife Monique, wanted to tell you hello. So uh, you work with Monique, so she wanted to tell you hello. Um, yes, but hello, everybody. John, so... Before we get into the, the belly of programs, activities, and COVID, I want you to share with everyone, if you don't mind, how long you've been with this company, your background. I know that you've evolved, like many other current residents on our call, 
they want, might want to hear a little bit about um, that role transition. And then just for giggles, what you love to do. Um, so I've been here for seven years and four months. Yeah, starting in November of 2012. So yeah, or 20, yeah, 2012. Um, yeah, so seven years and um, I have, I've loved it um, ever since um, I started off coming out of college as a personal trainer and I really wanted to kind of work with uh, athletes and I actually um, got uh, put with someone who was 75 years old on accident and it was kind of interesting because of all the people that I worked with it was one day her name was Bonnie and um, Bonnie had, hadn't run or jogged in 20 years and we were exercising and we did something and it was just a brisk pace that she got to and she felt like she was running and she looked at me and started crying and she said I haven't run in 20 years I can't believe I just did that and for me I just knew that this was the population I was meant to work with to see that kind of joy in her eyes it was just kind of over for me for there so I kind of, um, I, I was able to, I was fortunate enough to get a job here, um, starting off at Elements as a uh, wellness specialist. And from there, it just kind of grew. I've grown in the company and now I um, am the director of Resident Lifestyle. So it has been uh, quite a journey. And your favorite thing, your favorite thing to do with Monique, like what do you all do for fun? Oh boy. Um, I can't say the I can't say my favorite thing to do with Monique. I might get fired, but my second favorite thing to do with Monique, um, we love we love to walk and travel. Um, next week we're going to Phoenix, uh, and we are going to go to the Grand Canyon, and we're going to go to Sedona and uh, Scottsdale, and we are just really excited just to be able to go uh, travel and do some walking. So we love to just do a lot of walking and traveling. So that is our uh, second favorite thing. To you are so cute. <laughs> As the director of lifestyle services, do you want to talk a few seconds about your team and for those listening, your vision, your goals? Um, so I have, I've been blessed with one of the greatest teams that anybody could ever ask for. Um, the one thing that I have learned is that it takes a special person to care for people more than you care for yourself. And we've had a couple of people who have worked here and they've been really good at the job, but that's just been that one part they're missing is showing that care for others that kind of almost trumps really their own their own desire. And I have been blessed with Nancy Fetters, Lori Belisario, um, Pat Bellman, Josie Rader, Hillary Swift, Sandy Ratliff. Um, I've just been blessed with the most amazing staff of people who I know is gonna do whatever they can to make a resident happy. Um, so Nancy, as you already heard Pat bragging on her, um, Nancy is, she is 99.9% .9 perfect. Her only flaw is that she likes Notre Dame. If Nancy didn't like Notre Dame, then I think that Monique would have a run for her money. But um, that's the one thing that's really back. Yeah, can't get past that. But, uh, but you know, Nancy and the trips and travel, she has just taken that, I mean, into the upper stratosphere with just some of the things that she's done with the residents and her, her patience with them. And um, with everyone else, with Josie, with Hillary, with Lori, with Pat, um, with just being able to see them, I'm just so excited for the rest of the building after finally when COVID starts to subside, for everyone to just see them more often as well. I couldn't agree more, and I love listening to your enthusiasm for our residents and for your team. So let's get into the heart of what some people who don't live here yet, what they don't know. Pretend they know nothing. Uh, there are different types of programs, things to do here. Talk about, let, let's just go through each bullet. One, two. What, I know that uh, the social groups, support groups, clubs, the word clubs. Talk about that. Well, I actually, I want to um, go back because you asked a question and I did not answer it. You asked me what's my vision for uh, yeah. the uh, lifestyle team. And for me, 
uh, really, I just kind of, like I said, going back a little bit, um, it really is just finding, helping people find shared interests with each other. It's about building a community. Um, I don't know if anyone can really tell, but I am a large, uh, bald-headed black man. And <laughs> if you sat there and you rolled up, um, a prototypical activities uh, coordinator or director of resident lifestyles for an area that was predominantly uh, white with older uh, older population, I wouldn't be it. Um, but the one thing I have learned over my years is that all you need is just that one nugget of shared interest with someone. Um, it doesn't matter what it is. If I'm walking and I'm seeing a resident and they have one in Ohio State Buckeyes jersey or a shirt or a hat, we can talk for 15, 20 minutes, and it has nothing to do with anything besides that. I just made a new friend off of just that one shared interest, and then you start finding out you got maybe two or three or four different shared interests, and that's how you really start building those relationships. And it's just exciting to really get a chance to be in a position to help people start discovering those different areas that they share with other people in more ways that they can kind of grow. Um, so back to the current question, um, our social groups, our support groups, and our clubs, uh, right now, really, I mean, uh, you, as you all know, we're in the midst of a pandemic, so a lot of our things are digital. Um, a lot of our classes, like the social groups, we have a Bible study, um, but a lot of our Bible study is shown on our in-house network on TV. Um, that is on our Touchdown network. Um, so it's not really meeting all together, but it is through that. Um, support groups, we have a veterans group um, run by uh, Mr. Bill Dersh. We have an Alzheimer's group um, support group. We have an ALS support group. And really, it, if you need support, you let me know and I'll make that group for you. I mean, it really is. Even if it's just two people talking to another person that's sharing or kind of going through what you're going through does amazing things for you. So really, the sky's the limit. There's no limit on what we can kind of start I agree. So there are, and when he talks about that, you all, my sidebar would be club wise, we play a lot of cards. If you love bridge, it's here. If you are somebody that wants to play euchre, we can, John can help you get plugged in and start a euchre private group. Like the fellowship factor uh, is something you need to understand. The the heartbeat of Berkeley Square is not the new house or where you live as, you know, they are. We love your houses. But as I hope you're reading into John and everything we're sharing, the fellowship of the people in these clubs, groups, trips, and travel just are what is special, truly special about Berkeley Square. I know you talked about Nancy. Do you want to add anything? I think a lot on this call would love to hear about the future of trips and travel. Do you have any like sweet highlights that we can all look forward to? Um, yes. So one of the best days of 2021 thus far was the day where Nancy Fetters came to me with her big Nancy Fetters smile. And she, she said that the Reds are going to have opening day. And she was so excited. She talked about that email and, uh, we are proved that we are going to have our Reds game. We are actually going to go to a Reds game. Um, towards the end of May, I believe it is. And that's really going to be the jump off to our trips and travel program going into 2021. We have not gone on a trips and travel trip since February 2020, I want to say. So it's been over a year. So we are really excited. And um, Nancy's also working on a partnership. We've already had this partnership with Provident Travel. Um, but she has a long list of different trips that they're going to be doing, um, going into things such as uh, riverboat cruises. Uh, I think that we're going to be doing some Aronoff trips. So uh, she has a lot of exciting things upcoming. So, yes, um, trips and travel is alive and well, and it will be really getting going again coming in May. Uh, I think every resident that's plugged into this call is probably grinning and yelling and yep, jump up and down. Hey, so uh, I want to make sure I'm watching our time. Activities on campus. So this bullet could be a thousand hours. But mm -hmm. I know on holiday events, if I love to paint, 
uh, educational opportunities. I, I want you to talk, if you don't mind, or just share a few tidbits of what you've seen. Um, I've heard 